Phase four of the MCU is finally over. Finally. This past year was so, so long. And I'd honestly say this phase goes through some of the highest highs and lowest lows of the MCU to date. Uh, they expanded in new and honestly innovative ways with the introduction of the Disney Plus shows. So I just want to make it clear that I don't hate phase four. I don't love it. And it is my least favorite of the MCU, but I don't hate it. I, I respect it, honestly, I do. But just because I respect it doesn't mean I can't talk about and critique it because this phase of the MCU really didn't work. And I think I know why. But quickly before we get into the video, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe because it helps out the channel a ton and tells me that you still enjoy the stuff I'm doing. Also, I do want to quickly touch on that I know phase four is kind of like the grieving of, let's be real, the main story of the MCU, the grieving of Infinity War and Endgame. And while I do like that idea and I understand it, I think it's executed a little poorly poorly and we will touch on that you know throughout the video but I wanted to let you know that I am aware of why this phase is the way it is and I am aware of the grieving idea me understanding it sadly doesn't make it good though so let me quickly explain how this is going to work I'm going to give a short review and then give a score to each of the 17 phase 4 MCU projects then I'm going to rank them from worst to best so that you can see clearly where I stand on this phase as a whole then I'm going to explain why phase 4 of the MCU did not work let's get right into it Vision. This show holds a special place in my heart, and I think it really always will. So I already know that I'm going to be a little biased towards this one, but you have to understand, I know you understand, right? Because everyone, and I mean everyone watched WandaVision, right? This show was proof that the MCU could keep going after Endgame, and it started off strong. It was unique and artistically separated from the rest of the MCU, which was something I loved. It was just so different, right? And it was also the first show, so obviously it was gonna have some road bump, but for the most part, they handled it pretty well. You know, staying up till midnight every week to watch the next episode and theorizing with everyone I knew about what was happening, what is going on inside of WandaVision, you know, is Vision dead? What's going on? You know, there was just a vibe to this that I don't don't think the MCU has recaptured with any of the other shows. I was just so invested in the mystery, like completely. It was a great time. Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen are national treasures together. Like their chemistry is amazing. Uh, just, you know, seeing Wanda and Vision, it really makes you want them to be together and want them to be happy. And that's what makes this really good. It was also just great being back in the MCU after a year of literally nothing. I mean, I do have some negatives. The show is far from perfect. Like where's White Vision now, which isn't really an issue with the show, but they did introduce that and it's been a year now and we have nothing. The Quicksilver like plot twist I guess was just offensive towards the fans and really just like a real spit in the face honestly. Wanda's 180 from this show to Multiverse of Madness is just like really weird and I, I don't like it and that really does kind of bring this show down knowing that she becomes just a full on supervillain like less than a year later. Also the show becoming typical MCU third act in the final episode or so was super disappointing because this show really could have been something special and wholly unique compared to the rest of the MCU if they had just gone all the way. But instead, we got the action movie ending, which is fine, I guess. One last compliment I will give the show is it introduces the grieving theme of this phase. This phase is all about grief, right? We've all known that. And it introduces it really well. This show is great. Um, not perfect, but it's really good. Uh, 8 out of 10, I'd say. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the second show in phase 4, and it was... It was alright. It was okay. Honestly, the show introduces some new things that I really do like, but it also is a little forgettable. Um, Sam taking on the shield and finally becoming Captain America. I, I love that. I love the responsibility of the shield, you know, building on that grief issue of like build off of what Steve was. I really like that. Also, when he does finally become Captain America, I love this suit, man. It is amazing. Why don't we have Captain America 4 yet? I need more of this suit. It is perfect. Bucky is pretty good here. You know, uh, they also introduce us to John Walker, who is the only character I'm actually excited for in the Thunderbolts next year. Or, wait, next ne next year? Whatever that movie is, I don't even know. Uh, this also easily has the best action in Phase 4, I'd say. It looks very, very good. CGI-wise, compared to the rest of the phase, it is above and beyond it. Um, now, the show does have its problems. Pretty big ones. Uh, John Walker, I'm confused on whether I'm supposed to like him or not and it's a little weird like am I supposed to be rooting for his redemption story because like he's kind of a bad guy like I said at the beginning it's a little forgettable like it's it's genuinely like it's good and you have a fun time with it but it's been a year since it came out and I if I didn't rewatch it for this video I wouldn't really be able to remember any of the main plot points that well I also like forgot it came out last year for a while like honestly uh, not a terrible villain but not not great 
really. And it did not need to be six episodes. This would have worked way better as a movie in my opinion. I'd give it a 5.5 or a 6 out of 10. Black Widow. This was the first actual movie of phase four and out of the three things we've gone over so far, it's the worst. I don't hate this movie, but I definitely don't love it at all. Uh, this movie also kind of follows the grief motive. I mean like a, a little bit kind of yeah, because because she she's dead, but I mean not during the movie and they don't really like grieve her. So not really. Anyway, the action's pretty good all around with a pretty basic action movie story, but it's fun. It's fun. There's just some like, it's a dumb, fun, like kind of popcorn movie. The side characters are all bad, really, except Elena, who I know a lot of people love, but like even she isn't great here. Uh, she's much better in Hawkeye. Also, the worst part of this movie, Taskmaster, she is just bad and kind of a joke compared to what Taskmaster is supposed to be. Like the Avengers video game got Taskmaster better than this movie did. I'm not excited for for her return in Marvel Suicide Squad, like at all, really. Overall, a seeing Scarlett Johansson return is very nice as Black Widow because she's been there since the beginning. Seeing her finally get her movie is great. Like I said, there's some good action with some questionable CGI, but that's to be expected from the MCU, really. Not terrible, not great. All around, this is a five out of 10. Pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. This show is not great as a show, really, but it's a ton of fun. Like, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, Tom Hiddleston is perfect as always, and seeing Loki again is great. Um, um, I also love his scenes with Morbius. He's just a great addition to the show. Um, their chemistry is great. The TVA is cool in concept. This one, kind of like Black Widow, also moves away from the grief idea a little bit. I mean, I guess you can argue that he's sad about his brother or like the multiverse. I, I don't know, really. It's also a little weird that this isn't our Loki. I mean, he knows everything our Loki knows because he did like an MCU phase two and three marathon, but it's not really him, which is a little weird, but it is kind of him. So I don't, I don't know. I'm also not a fan of Loki falling in love with a variant of himself. I know people say this is like such a Loki thing to do and I guess it kind of is, but I still don't like it. It is a little weird. Also, season two is taking a while. It's been a year now and we have nothing, so that's a little annoying. That's just a thing with all these Disney Plus shows. Season one comes out and then we have to wait like two or three years for season two, which is annoying and a bit disappointing, but you take what you can get with these shows, honestly. Uh, it's a fun show. I had fun with it. It's one of the better ones for sure. I'd say like 6.5 are arguably a 7 out of 10 even. Man, I don't like this show. What if? Uh, what if the show didn't exist? That, that was a good one. Um, honestly, I don't like it at, at all. I think there's cool ideas here in one or two decent episodes, but for the most part, it's very forgettable. And it feels like they were restricting themselves, which is weird. Like, this is animated. Go all out. Like, do, do cool stuff. But it feels like they were limiting themselves to things that they could one day put in Secret Wars or, like, Doctor Strange. Like, similar to, like, Ultron and Captain Carter. Like, we got cool ideas. They're just not done super well. Uh, I also don't love the art style. It reminds me a bit too too much of those hyper realistic comics from like the early 2010s like when marvel was trying to make all of their comic books look as realistic as possible but in doing so they just made them super ugly and hard to look at um i also really wish the show was just more one-off stories like that would have been a ton more fun but instead they decided to tie it all together into a genuinely underwhelming multiverse event that i could care less about uh four out of ten shang chi and the legend of the ten rings wow this movie is marvel putting their 12 years of experience on show as they seamlessly introduce a ton of new characters and they all just fit perfectly immediately to the point where I am just so excited for Chung chi to just team up with all the Avengers you know I mean whatever Avengers we have right now I don't even know I'm excited for him to be in Kang Dynasty or Secret Wars I'm super excited for a Chung chi sequel which I really hope we get it's not a perfect movie like I feel like the movie kind of gets worse as it goes but all around it's pretty solid and it's a lot of fun which is most you should really look for in a superhero movie at the end of the day is just a ton of fun and this movie is a ton of fun. The CGI is pretty good for the most part. There's some great action in here and there's some weird things here and there that I don't love, but it's one of the better comic book movies that we got in 2021. I'd say this is another 8 out of 10. We're moving through these pretty quick, but that's just because there's a ton of projects to get through. There's like 17 different things here. Uh, the Eternals. A lot of people hate this movie for some reason and a lot of people love this movie for some reason. I'm pretty indifferent about it. Like, I forget that it exists most of the time, which isn't even me trying to diss the movie. It's just not amazing and nothing really affected the rest of the MCU in a way that makes me think about it. Also, it's a big cast that for the most part, they're all pretty good in here, but I don't have a favorite Eternal. And if you ask me to like name all the Eternals, I would probably struggle, um, which is not a great thing. And that might just be me, but I just feel like they weren't given enough time individually. As a group, they're kind of all right, but individually, 
age, really, I wouldn't, like, care about a project about any of them, really. It's just kind of middle of the road, this one. It's a little, eh, a little boring at times. There's some really nice-looking CGI in the movie, as well as a decent story, but it just doesn't work for me. Uh, in a weird way, this is just kind of like, it's not my cup of tea. I could see people really liking this, but it's pretty, eh, it's just kind of whatever. Like, I wouldn't be opposed to Eternals 2 if that's what we got, but I also wouldn't care if we never got Eternals 2. So, you know, like, it's just like, this happened. I'm okay with it happening. I don't really care that much. Uh, it's better than what if, so I'd give it a 4.5 out of 10. Uh, don't hate me. These are just opinions. It's not a bad movie. 4.5. It, it sounds low and it is low, but it, it, I still enjoyed it. It was still fun. This show's a weird one for me because it starts off pretty good and seeing Clint again is really nice. Uh, like Jeremy Renner is great as always. Uh, this also ties in really well with the theme of grief, like perfectly one of the best ones. Haley Steinfeld kills it as Kate Bishop, but the show fails where every other MCU show fails and that is it's going pretty well for a while and randomly in the last episode a bunch of fanfare happens and we are left with little to no answers to anything um i feel like the show had a really strong first episode second episode was all right it's getting better you know third fourth episode and then it really goes downhill in the finale where things just didn't feel very finale like it felt like okay this was cool there should be like two more episodes like it was cool that kingpin was there i guess but it wasn't needed and also didn't change this finale like at all like he didn't really do anything. I'd be interested in seeing what they would do with a second season. Like, I really hope they are getting one, but I don't even know if they're doing another one. I do hope so. Uh, I want to see more Kate becoming Hawkeye because, like, while we did get that here, there was still a lot of Clint, and I think just... Let him go retire. Give us a Kate Bishop show. Let's just see what she can do as Hawkeye. Honestly, this is just a nice little fun Christmas show that I'll probably never watch again, realistically. But there were good moments. There were bad moments. It was just pretty basic. 5.5 out of 10. What can I even say? What can I say? What can I say that hasn't already been said? Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I do want to make a video about this movie soon because I have so much to say about it. But for now, let's just keep it at... This is the Spider-Man movie we've wanted for so long on so many levels. The Spider-Verse, the return of Toby and Andrew, Tom Holland, Spider-Man finally becoming Spider-Man. It's, it's amazing. Uh, the CGI is not great in this movie, uh, especially when I watched it in theaters, um, on the night of premiere, the CGI was really wonky. I feel like when I watched it again digitally, it was a little better. There was still some like, oh, this isn't great CGI moments. Uh, the story is flawed and not written amazingly, but it is good. It's a lot of fun, and I'm gonna be honest, it deserves like a 7 out of 10, but as a Spider-Man fanboy, I'm giving it an 8.5. I am sorry. I hope you understand. Moon Knight. Probably the show with the most potential, but was also the most all over the place out of all the Disney Plus shows we've gotten so far. Uh, it started off not great for me. Like, I was not in the first episode, but then it got pretty good pretty fast and was on track to be one of the better MCU series, but then it really shot itself in the foot over and over again in the finale. Like, most of these other shows, it really suffers from a twist villain and a rushed big blockbuster action sequence for the finale that in this show is really not good like it, it feels worse than usual the twist villain is not interesting and then the big blockbuster action sequence is nothing other than a cgi mess i enjoy oscar isaac in the role i think he's great and i really do hope to see him return as moon knight i also don't love or hate the changes they made to his character especially someone who wasn't the biggest moon knight fan i can tell they they did change some stuff from the comics but i'm not like well versed enough to know exactly what they changed it's not terrible for sure this is not a horrible it's not the worst of the mcu but there was a lot of squandered potential here that i really hope they get a second season so they can kind of redeem themselves a little bit because this could have been great but somehow ended up being one of my least favorite phase four shows and projects overall i'd give it a five out of ten i really don't like this movie i'm just gonna say it straight away i do not like this movie uh a lot of it doesn't sit well with me and a lot of it does not work i think sam raimi's directing at times is great here and pushes the mold of the mcu which is amazing but also at times does not fit the movie and kind of makes it worse. It's a little jarring. The editing is not great here. The title character Doctor Strange has zero character growth throughout the movie. His arc that he has is like arc in air quotes is literally less of an arc and more of a straight line. It is really shallow. It's really upsetting because as someone who was a huge fan of the first Doctor Strange movie, seeing this movie be less of a Doctor Strange sequence
sequel and more of a WandaVision sequel with Doctor Strange was super disappointing for me. Calling this movie Multiverse of Madness is also disappointing because the multiverse stuff here is bad. I think it's the worst part of the movie, actually. And all around, this is just a broken movie that not even a great director could fully save. Um, There's some good stuff here. Elizabeth Olsen acts her heart out in this one, and I love her performance in this movie, but she's not my favorite villain. I much prefer her as a hero, and I don't know how you redeem her in the future because she's pretty far gone in this one. America Chavez was a great addition to the MCU that I really hope they do more with in the future. There's some funny moments here. There's some cool stuff that happens here, but all around, it's just, it's okay. It's like a 5 out of 10, but for me, it's a really low 5 out of 10. Miss Marvel. This show was a pleasant surprise. I was kind of feeling burnt out a little bit this year of like the stuff not being great, but from the beginning, this show felt different. It's a ton of fun from the first episode all the way to the finale. Like there's just, you can't ignore that this is a fun show. Uh, it had great vision in the beginning. Sadly, that vision is only in the beginning. It feels like around episode three, the life just got sucked out of this show. And that's kind of the part that I don't love about this. It kind of feels like a commercial for the Marvels movie, which I don't love that. Uh, hopefully I'm wrong. We do get a season two that is better than this one or just as good at least because I feel like if they kept up that pace that they had and that vibe that they had for the first two, three and a half episodes, it would have easily been one of the best Disney Plus shows, but I feel like the show got really lost in the comic book of it all. Like as the show went on, it was it went from this really good show about Kamala Khan and with this like great vibe to it, but then it just got lost and really struggled to hammer home the new and let's be real worse origin of this Kamala Khan. Uh, it's still good. Uh, I like her a lot better in the comics, sadly. I wanted to like this version of her, and I do, but I don't love this version of her as much as I love the comic book version of her, who is one of the best comic book characters to come out of the last 20 years. Honestly, it's not as good as it could have been. Had a lot of potential, but it's not terrible. Six, uh, let's say 6.5 out of 10. Thor Love and Thunder. I feel like everything to be said about this movie has been said. It's the worst comic book movie since Suicide Squad 2016. It turns the whole world of Thor into a joke. It makes me way less excited for any Thor content going forward. I was actually pretty hyped for a second Thor trilogy. I thought that's what we were going to get, like Thor 4, 5, and 6. But after Love and Thunder, I'm good. Like, I'm, that is enough. We don't need any more Thor. Uh, the good in this movie is there. Like, sure, it's there, but it's very muffled. Jane, she is amazing from start to finish, minus Taika Waititi coming in and ruining these characters but for the most part she is great Thor is a shell of his former self here not even a character he's a walking punchline and the worst part is he's not even funny that's the difference between somebody like James Gunn and Taika Waititi they both sacrifice story for comedy at times James Gunn is better at not going all the way because you see what happens when you go all the way Thor Love and Thunder happens James Gunn still has characters this doesn't have characters and also this wasn't funny this was the least funny MCU movie that came out this year in my opinion I just I was not laughing laughing, I was not having a good time, and it just really hurts because, you know, Thor Ragnarok was the perfect balance of what a Thor movie should be, and it was also directed by Taika Waititi, and that was a good movie. Yes, it had a lot of comedy, too much at times, but for the most part, it balanced it out. This movie didn't even try to do the same. They really went and turned Gore the God Butcherer into random gray guy that kidnaps kids. How do you do that? I don't read Marvel comics like I do DC comics, mainly because they, they aren't great, usually, but I like Gore the God Butcherer. And when I found out he's gonna be played by Christian Bale and that Taika Waititi was coming back and the trailer looked good I was pretty excited for this movie, but I mean you you've seen the movie There's not much to get excited about there It's a genuine spit in the face towards superhero media and Taika Waititi does not care You can just tell that this was a paycheck for him and it is him really turning against superheroes three out of ten Honestly, not good. Let's talk about she hulk Um, i'm not ready for this one because this is a landmine like talking about this show is a landmine People love to hate this show and the worst part is I see the issues that people have but I don't hate it for some reason It's not as bad as most people say it is it definitely has flaws. It might be the most flawed Disney Plus show we have, but there's also a lot of good stuff here, like Wong. He's great. I love him. Now, I think the reason the show gets the hate it does is because of how it deals with its fourth wall break, which I think is a good idea and is playing into She-Hulk's strength in the comic books. But what it does every time here is it makes fun of the people that call Phase 4, like the MCU and all that. That is perfectly fine by me. You can poke fun at them all you want, but don't do it by saying that everyone who doesn't like the show is an incel that's never spoke to a woman before. 
before. While that might be true for some watching the show, this isn't the perfect show to be doing that. You can't really do that because this show is not that great and is written very poorly. Like for a crime drama, the courtroom scenes are the worst in the show. They're boring and predictable, which should not be the case for a show about a lawyer, right? I also think we're getting a season two. And if we do, that's definitely where they need to improve on the show. Call out people less or get better writers. Those are your two options, really. They need to make it to where Jen is an interesting character as well because uh, she's not. Her drama that she had going on was not great. And even the She-Hulk stuff, Stuff was just okay. So like I said, get better writers who can make interesting courtroom scenes and also that can make me care about Jen's personal life and not just when she hooks up with Daredevil. Who I mean, obviously he's great. It's Daredevil. He's gonna be great. What did you expect? But the show overall, it's one of the better Disney Plus shows we got this year, but it definitely still needs some work. I'd give it like a 6 out of 10. Werewolf by Night. So this isn't really a movie or a Disney Plus series. Instead, this is like a new thing that they're doing called like a Disney Plus special presentation. Uh, it's one of the two that we got in phase four and it's pretty solid it was actually directed by michael giacchino which is really cool to me I like man can compose and direct he went and composed the batman this year and then also directed werewolf by night that's pretty impressive and while he isn't my favorite director he does bring some flavor and heart to this project and it really does show that he really was taking inspiration off of those horror movies of the 50s and the 60s and you can really feel that in here and i think that's a really fun thing for the mcu to do going forward it's easily the project with the most heart out of all of phase four i don't have a ton to say about it plot wise i feel like it's kind of just whatever but it's a really fun homage to these horror movies of the past and it really shows the diversity that the mcu can have which is always nice like i said about wandavision it's just great to see when they do things that aren't inside the mcu mold now this does have some parts where it is in the mcu mold a little bit and it's not perfect just because it breaks out of that mold but for the most part it is not a typical mcu thing and that's just a ton of fun honestly it's really nice seeing this get the uh, recognition it deserves but it's a little overrated some people are saying it's the best comic book thing we got this year it is not it's still pretty good though i'd give it a 7 out of 10 this movie is a roller coaster of emotions black panther wakanda forever i went into this expecting it to really get to me um as someone who really did enjoy the first black panther and it does do that it does its job and it really plays into the grief motive of the phase four probably better than anything else and i think they do it because it's not just the characters that are feeling grief, it's people in real life too, with the loss of Chadwick Boseman. You can just feel the love and care that went into this movie while watching it, and that's something that I have to congratulate Ryan Coogler on, because it feels like he 100% got the movie he was trying to make, and honestly, that's really special. The CGI, I hate to just bring up the CGI in a movie like this, but the CGI is rough at times, but it is pretty good for the most part. Letitia Wright does an amazing job as Shuri in this one. She outshines any of her other performances in the MCU and she plays into the grief very well and you can just really feel her character change throughout the movie and it's one of the better parts of the movie for me. Uh, Namor is not my favorite uh, villain that we've gotten in the MCU, anti-hero villain. He's just not great for me. I didn't love anything that he was doing here. I didn't hate anything he was doing either though. I feel like the actor who I'm forgetting the name of right now, I'm sorry, uh, he did a great job as Namor but I just wasn't super interested in what he was doing. Uh, this is also not my favorite MCU movie. Uh, a lot of people are saying this is the best MCU sequel. It's not. It's very good, but it's not that good. I think in a few months, people will realize that while this movie is good, it isn't on the pedestal that some are putting it on, but that's fine. Honestly, you can put it on that pedestal because realistically, it is still a good movie. I have my gripes with it. Like everyone in the MCU is becoming Iron Man now. Ironheart's Mark II suit just looks like a Power Ranger and it does not look good on film. I'm really hoping they change it up in the show. The pace in this movie is pretty bad like there are lulls in this movie where it just feels like it's never gonna end but it's not even that long but it feels really long so like the pacing is definitely messed up but overall the movie's good and for the most part this is a beautiful heart-wrenching tribute to Black Panther and Chadwick Boseman and that's really nice it's a great way to end the phase 7.5 for Wakanda Forever. I'm kind of okay with this being the end of phase four, even if there is a holiday special that's actually the end of phase four. So we got a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday 
special clearly inspired and making fun of the Star Wars holiday special from like 1978. I didn't expect a lot from this. I did not expect a ton. I went into this. I was like, okay, they're probably not even going to have all of the Guardians in here because like they're filming Guardians 3. There's just no way this is going to be like that great. It's probably just like thrown together. I was pleasantly surprised with a genuinely touching and heartfelt Christmas MCU movie, which is really weird. I had a ton of fun with it and was laughing throughout. It was also really nice to see Mantis and Drax who usually get like washed out in the noise of the actual movies get some recognition here. Uh, it's nothing crazy, like nothing like super like changing of the MCU groundbreaking happens here. It's just a silly fun movie to end off the phase with some actually good emotional moments in there. And it does an okay job at also tying into the grief theme, kind of a little bit. Kevin Bacon being in there is a really funny addition that I just love is canon to the MCU now. Like that, that's amazing to me. They've been bringing up Kevin Bacon since the first Guardians movie, I think. Honestly, I'd give this a seven out of 10, which there might be some recency bias going on here, but I really enjoyed this holiday special. I don't know why, but it was just a ton of fun. And yeah, I think a seven out of 10 is a pretty fair score. Now that we've finally gone over all 17 projects and put scores to them, I'm going to quickly go through my rankings of phase four, and then we're going to talk about, you know, why it didn't work. So let's just go from the beginning. Number 17, Thor, Love and Thunder. 16, What If? 15, Eternals. Number 14, Doctor Strange, Into the Multiverse of Madness. 13, Black Widow. 12, Moon Knight. 11, Hawkeye. 10, She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. 9, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. 8, we have Miss Marvel. 7, Loki. 6, Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. Don't know how that snuck up here this high, but it really did. Number 5, Werewolf by Night. Number 4, and people aren't gonna like this, but Wakanda Forever, Black Panther. Ton of fun, but the other three are just a little better. Number 3, WandaVision. I will always love this. There's nothing you can say to change my mind. Number 2, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. This is just a great movie and honestly deserves the number 1 spot, but uh, I'm a Spider-Man fanboy, so number 1, Spider-Man No Way Home. You can't be too surprised. Honestly, it deserves to be like 2 or 3, but it's still a ton of fun. Now that we have all of these, those are my final rankings. They're on screen now. You can see all 17 of my projects. I would like for everybody who's watching this video to please tell me uh, at least your top 10 phase 4s, or if you want to go through all 17, I would love to see that. Love to see everybody's opinions. This is definitely the most diverse phase of the MCU, so I'd just love to see where everybody puts things. Now let's get on to why phase four did not work. Finally, after everything we've been doing today, we can finally answer the question, why did phase four of the MCU not work? Why is this the worst phase when it has some of the best moments? There's a couple of reasons that a lot of people talk about, with the main one that I see being the lack of continuity, lack of Avengers type film to end the phase, this phase easily being the most disconnected and jumbled out of all of them. I recognize that, but as someone who enjoys the DC movies, this doesn't bother me a ton. We've been waiting for like six years for another DC team up movie. It's not coming. So yeah, it's off-putting that this phase of the MCU it had no place or that it was building towards, but I don't think that's the main issue. My issue with phase four and the reason why I think it didn't work and why phase five won't work is because they're oversaturating the market. They're oversaturating not just the MCU, but superheroes to the point where a film like The Batman felt like a breath of fresh air for so many. They oversaturated it to the point where a film like Black Adam, a box office flop and all around basic superhero movie received the third highest audience score on Rotten Tomatoes this year. How does that happen? People are getting tired and the MCU is not slowing down to accommodate that. It's just speeding up. Uh, it's actually pretty similar to like the comic book industry where there's always a lot going on with so many writers and so many different stories and timelines yet somehow they're all connected. But I don't have to read them all. That's the beauty of it, right? Like I don't have to read every comic book. If I get tired of the Batman comics going on, I can go read Superman and still enjoy Justice League a few months later. You can't do that with the MCU because it has been built on the foundation of everyone getting rewarded for watching everything. Just like with Endgame, that movie is good on its own, but so much better if you have seen the rest of the MCU. So everyone now wants to be in on it because everyone has seen Endgame. They want to be in on Secret Wars and Kang Dynasty and they want to watch everything. But when we have to sit through these shows that aren't for us, like they aren't made for us or they're just barely five out of tens in quality, we want to skip it. We want to just watch the heroes we care about. We want to see the stuff that's 
good, honestly. But that fear of being left out, that fear of us not getting the joke and everyone laughing in the theater during Secret War, but we're not laughing because we skipped Moon Knight season two. That's what forces all of us to sit through it and watch all 50 plus hours that they gave us in phase four. It feels like a chore. It feels like I'm being forced to sit down and watch something that I don't want to watch and it does not work. It doesn't work. It is a bad way to lay your foundation because we still have the entirety of phase five before we even get another Avengers movie. And I'm pretty sure you can see the issue with that. They're building it to where we have one big exciting point that's Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars and they come out like six months apart, right? That is that is what we are building towards. Usually with phase ones, two, and three, we had Avengers, we had Civil War, we had Age of Ultron, then we had Infinity War and then Endgame, right? Secret Wars is four years from now, four years away, and that's our Endgame too. That is the what they're trying to make Endgame again. You know, Endgame had 10 years of stories building into it. We have four until Secret Wars, four years. And I feel like those four years are going to be just as filled as phase four was. And it is worrying. It's worrying because you're going to lose people. People aren't going to be able to sit through this and they're going to go watch Secret Wars and it's not going to make sense and they're not going to like it and you're not going to get the response that you got for Endgame. I just, I, I think it's almost impossible that Secret Wars and Kang Dynasty live up to Infinity War and Endgame. I, I'd gladly be wrong because that'd be amazing. I'm very hopeful for phase five, but I'm also trying to be realistic and I honestly already believe the MCU has seen its best days because going forward, binge watching the MCU before an Avengers movie, it won't be that fun thing that it used to be. It'll be a chore and no one's going to want to do it. And it's not going to work. And if I'm honest, that's why phase four did not work. All right. So that's the video. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Tell me in the comments below, but uh, let's be cordial and respect all opinions. All right. We don't need to start a war zone. Uh, why do you think this phase didn't work? Why do you think phase four failed? Or uh, if you do think this phase worked, Tell me why. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And like I said earlier, if you want to, I'd love to see what your top 10 MCU phase four projects were. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, bye.